Yeah, today's the day. Another Magic the Gathering set brought to market. And it begs the question, the f*** is a jump start? So Jumpstart came out today, July 17, and it brings with it 664 cards. That's 78 new cards, 417 reprints, plus another 169 from the previously released Core Set 2021. The cards come in 20 card packs. Players take two packs and smash them together to form one 40 card deck. Now that might sound a bit familiar. If that's the case, you might be thinking of the tabletop game from AEG, Smash Up. That game won the 2013 UK Games Expo for Best General Card Game. Now, whereas the base Smash Up game features eight factions and is designed for multiplayer, Jumpstart boasts 46 different themes and is made for 1v1 play. These themes include plus one plus one counters built around the new M21 Planeswalker Boz Raket, milling strategies, Card draw around the new Teferi Master of Time Planeswalker, the Phyrexians, direct damage with the new Chandra Heart of Fire Planeswalker, angels, dogs, dragons, wizards, dinosaurs, and many, many more options at the player's disposal. Of course, part of the fun here is that you don't really know what kind of deck you're going to build until you crack open your two packs. But the niftiness of Jumpstart goes beyond just smashing together those two. 20 card, random, semi, pre-made pack deck thingies. There's actually a lot of really cool singles that really need to be talked about. First off, the basic lands. Yeah, you, you heard that right. What's neat here is that each theme gets its own unique basic land. The dog themed pack, for example, has a beautifully illustrated plains by Johannes Voss with a cute fluffy doggy there just sitting enjoying the simple things in life. That must be nice. Conversely, the Phyrexian Swamp not only shows a Phyrexian Wasteland with either a Phyrexian Negator or a Bliterator, honestly kind of hard to tell, but the card is actually written in the Phyrexian language. How cool is that? And there are a number of new cards that are already generating a lot of buzz despite not being modern, pioneer, or standard legal. Allosaurus Shepherd is an awesome one-drop elf that not only cannot be countered, it makes your other green spells uncounterable as well. Oh, and it can turn all of your elves into 5-5 dinosaurs. Rawr. Then there's Tiny Bones, a 1-2 skeleton rogue for one and a black that rewards you for your opponent's discarding and can be a game winner when an opponent has an empty hand. And let's not forget to mention Bruvok, the Grand Eloquent, a 1-4 legendary that simply doubles the amount of cards a player mills each time. There are also these neat dual-colored tap lands called Thriving Lands. Each one is tied to a specific color, but also allow the player to name its second color as its enter the battlefield ability. Talk about versatile. And of course, with more than 500 reprints, we'd be remiss not to uh, give a few a mention, and there are definitely quite a few worth mentioning, such as Crater Hoof Behemoth, Exquisite Blood, Lenvala, Keeper of Silence, Salavala, Heart of the Wilds, Rise of the Dark Realms, Phyrexian Tower, Ristic Study, and more. For many of these cards, it's great to see them reprinted so that more players have access to them. And by printing some of these in Jumpstart, it keeps the secondary market prices in check without completely flooding the market. Never mind the fact that Jumpstart is a print-to-demand set, meaning there is no definite end to the print run. Just whenever it doesn't make sense to print and ship anymore, that's when they stop. Now, Jumpstart's not just going to be a paper release, there will be a digital release as well. Actually, it was yesterday, I'm really on the ball on this one. Uh, one important thing to know, however, is that not every card in the set is making the jump to digital. Rather, Wizards of the Coast has decided instead to substitute 20 of the cards in the paper release with different cards on, on Arena instead. For example, Path to Exile in Paper becomes Banishing Light on Arena. Lightning Bolt becomes Lightning Strike. Ball Lightning becomes Lightning Serpent. Exhum becomes Bond of Revival. Rhystic Study becomes Teferi's Ageless Insight, and so on. Now, a number of these card substitutions are for cards that can be brand new to Arena, and that is a good thing. 
As for why Wizards of the Coast is making these substitutions, uh, however, that's kind of uh, anyone's best guess. Uh, our guess here is that they really don't want cards like Lightning Bolt, for example, in Historic as much as certain Magic players, Burn players specifically for uh, that example, might be happy about it. One other thing about Jumpstart on Arena is that you won't be able to actually buy the packs from the store, at least not currently. The only way you're going to be able to actually crack Jumpstart packs is by going into Jumpstart events, paying the entry fee, opening your cards there, and, well, rinse, wash, repeat. So, there you have it. That's Jumpstart. What do you think? So Wizards of the Coast doing the right thing by doing this two booster packs, smash into one deck thing? Are there any specific singles you're happy about, new or old or whatever? Just let us know in the comments section below. And uh, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and support Magic Untapped on Patreon. Even one dollar helps. No, really, one, one dollar really would help. Thanks for watching.